What is up, y'all? We are getting close to that time of year where if you get on YouTube and you're looking for lawn care advice, you're going to see a wide range of it. And it might get a little bit confusing as to what you should be doing, what you should not be doing. You'll start seeing pre-emergent videos. You'll start seeing mowing videos. You'll start seeing scalping videos. You're going to see all sorts of things, okay? But it doesn't mean that you need to be doing all those things as well. Hey, thanks for joining me here on Budget Lawns. If you find anything helpful, please give me a thumbs up, comment down below, and subscribe if you haven't already. So I got asked a question here recently. It said, uh, uh, how do I know when it's time to start mowing? Well, the things I talk about here on this channel predominantly apply to Bermuda grass in the transition zone. I am in the northern part of Arkansas, and it has still been full-blown winter here, so mowing isn't even on my radar, but it's not going to be long until it is. So I wanted to answer that question for you today. How do you know when it's time to start mowing? Well, until the middle part of April, I'm not going to get the mower out on the lawn at all and I'll get it out then just for my spring scalp. What is the spring scalp? It's where we take off the dead, dormant, brown material of the Bermuda grass from the winter, open that soil up to sunshine, airflow, more heat, all the nutrients it needs to wake up after its winter nap. I'll do that somewhere around April 15th. Okay, I like to plan my scalp till after the last projected frost or freeze. So look at your farmer's almanac, there's maps online. Find out when your last frost or freeze typically is. Plan your scalp around then and look. Sometimes it hits, sometimes it misses, and you get a late frost or freeze later than normal and you've already scalped, but guess what? That will be okay. Look, you dribble, shoot, and hope for the best. Plan your scalp around that last frost or freeze and You've done all the work you can, the A's in the barn. What happens after that is just history, okay? So that'll be the first time I get the, the lawnmower out on the yard for the year. Now, the second time, what do you do after you scalp? April into May, and then that stretch of spring before full-blown summertime, okay? Bermuda grass, once it starts waking up from the winter dormancy, it's not going to really do a whole lot or grow very vigorously until those daytime highs really start consistently staying around 80 degrees and those overnight lows start getting up into the 60s. So you may be getting some warm days in the 70s throughout the springtime, which will help it start waking up. And you may get some nights that stay pretty cool down in the 40s, low 50s. It's not until those temperatures get well up into the 80s, around 80, 85, and those overnight lows up into the 60s that it's really going to start moving a whole lot. Now, once you get into summer, you know that once the temperatures start getting into the 90s and overnight lows into the 70s, that's when Bermuda grass just goes gangbusters. But until then, in the springtime, when those temperatures aren't quite warm enough, might get the mower out on the lawn once a week just trying to keep the tips of the grass blades mowed on a weekly basis because that will really even though the temperatures aren't warm enough yet where we want them to start growing like crazy just getting it out on the lawn and mowing once a week in latter part of april and into may that'll help at least get the grass going to a certain extent and then once we get into now look all this is subject to change depending on the year i've seen the month of may where it got in to the upper 80s and low 90s so we're generally speaking here and i'm again i'm speaking from my location in the northern part of arkansas in the transition zone but it's usually not until the latter part of may that we really start seeing those temperatures creep up and staying there but once you start seeing those get around the 90 degree mark during the day and overnight lows consistently in the 60s, you're going to be hitting that twice a week mowing schedule. And I know some of you may say, mowing your lawn twice a week? 
Certainly you can get away mowing it at least once a week, but you have to mow it at least once a week. But if you want to take it to that next level, you got to get it in your head that twice a week mowing is almost a necessity, especially with Bermuda grass. If you're only mowing it once a week and you're letting it get too tall in between mows, you're going to notice that when you cut it that once a week, you're cutting off more than sometimes more than a third of the grass blade. And most of the Bermuda grass plant is brown stalk. So if you mow off too much of the green, you're going to notice that even though you're mowing once a week, you're cutting down to that brown stalk in spots and it's not looking as green and lush as you want it to. So you got to get it in your head that twice a week mowing is a necessity if you want to have a better lawn than most. So to recap, get that scalp in sometime after your last forecasted frost or freeze of the year. Then as you head through those cooler months of the spring, make sure you're getting out there once a week and just cutting it on a weekly basis to keep those tips trimmed. And then once you get into those warmer temps where you know that Bermuda gra grass thrives the best, I know you cool season folks are thinking, man, what, 90s, 100s, overnight lows in the 70s? That's, that's what you want for Bermuda grass? Absolutely, that's when it succeeds the most. So when it gets up into those warmer temperatures, you gotta be cutting that Bermuda at least twice a week, okay? Once a week, if you don't care that much and you just <laughs> wanna keep it trimmed, but if you want it better than average, twice a week is a must. But before you do any of this, folks, you have to know what grass type you have. You have to know where you're located. I'm gonna leave a couple links down below, one that will help you identify your grass type. If you don't know what that is and will help you figure out what zone you are in, whether it's warm season, cool season, or the transition zone, also, I'm going to leave a couple videos down below. We talked a little bit about scalping here today. I'm going to leave one about scalping and one about what happens if you do scalp and then you get that late frost or freeze. What's going to happen? You know, long story short, nothing if you ask me. But I'm going to leave a link below if you're interested in more detailed discussion over that. Because in my area, in northern part of Arkansas, I've seen eight inches of snow in March. I've seen snow all the way into May with some hard, deep freezes into May. There's one thing we cannot control when it comes to our lawns. We can do everything else from mowing, weed control, watering, pre-emergence, all that kind of stuff and fertilizing, but we can never control mother nature. We gotta take what she gives us and roll with the punches, make the best decisions and the best timing choices that we can and deal with what happens in the end. All right, y'all, that's going to wrap it up for this edition of Budget Lawns. I hope you enjoyed what we talked about here today and found some of it useful to a certain extent, and I hope to see you next time.